it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up? Home Skillet Biscuit. I started doing my makeup because I was feeling emotions, a lot of emotions, and I like to do my makeup when I'm feeling this overwhelming feelings of emotion. <laughs> and I figured, why not just do like a get ready with me? I have a lot on my mind right now because I am getting ready to move and there's just a lot of emotions wrapped up in that and also I've been traveling a lot and being very like introspective and and kind of thinking about my life and thinking about my interactions with other people and I'm just in a lot of emotion. I figured it'd be quite therapeutic to like try out some new products while I get ready to do nothing to just take pictures to put on Instagram. Yeah, okay. Also, I know there's quite like a subsect of people that really like my get ready with me is because they just play them while they're doing laundry or something. So this one's for you, sis. <laughs> so I've already done my eyebrows and I have like some eyeshadow on. I'm trying out the Norvina palette. Did I need it? No, because it kind of looks like the last palette, just more purple. Um, let's start with the most immediate thing that's probably on my mind right now is moving. Um, moving is super duper stressful. Basically, I'm moving out of my childhood home. This is my childhood home. I think it's overdue, but it worked out well. I've been here for a year after graduating. I saved up my money and now it's just time. Like, very much so time to go. Now, I consider just moving out on my own, which I could do, but I decided to move in with one of my best friends um, because I just think that transition will be nice. And then if ever she decides to move out, I've already like transitioned into my own place so I can like just own, I can just be in that place by myself. That's kind of like the mindset I'm in. And if she doesn't move out, me and this friend get along very well and we both value our time together and our time apart. So we get it. Like we're basically just like separate people that have their own place, but the other person buys a couch and then the other person buys a TV. That, I thought it was very cost efficient too. Like, I've been, you know, I was thinking about all those things. Looking at apartments, there's one place I'm looking at that I really want because it has a really nice closet. Is that weird? Though that's the reason why I want it because it has a nice closet and a really nice bathroom that I can girly up and make into just a mess of roses and gold and white. That's what I want my bedroom to be, like gold white and maybe rose blush tones, you know? If you've noticed, that's all I ever do. <laughs> also, I just look forward to that too, like just designing poorly, but designing something, you know, buying furniture and yada, yada, yada. I'm looking forward to it. But what kind of comes along with that is some growing pains, I think for, for myself and also for my family who, dare I say, loves me too much sometimes. <laughs> but kind of coming to terms with me leaving. But basically what it all boils down to is like, this is what's best for me um, in the grand scheme of things. I'm super excited. Also one thing that I'm thinking about is moving out will just ultimately make me a better YouTuber. And what I mean by that is I will be at liberty to use my entire house for YouTubing, is that a verb? I wanna cook with you guys. And it's very hard, like logistically in this house, it's very hard to explain, but it's hard to film in other places. You notice when I'm in this house, I film in pretty much the same room because logistically filming in other places, lighting wise and, and kind of the things that I, like it's just hard to film in this house. <laughs> so much of just my own space would just allow me to do more for you guys and also I just need it I just need my own space like I some people flourish living with like a lot of people and I'm not one of those people but this I mean this whole year has been a bunch of me testing what you know my boundaries and stuff because like I just said I do feel most comfortable by myself but I've been put in situations where I'm kind of forced to come to cuss like come to terms with uh how should I put this being being around copious amounts of people. Okay, so first off was Korea, which I haven't really talked about that much on this channel, I realized. Um, sorry about that. It's just I've been, I'm all over the place mentally, as you can imagine, the whole moving thing and traveling and whatnot. So Korea was like so good. Should have stayed longer. Wish I would have stayed longer. It was good. It was relaxing. It was, it was a good way to recenter myself. 
um, um, but when I was there even, everything just kind of clicked. And I don't think it was because it was Korea, it was just because I was like in my own zone and nothing to really distract me from what I was doing. And also just there to just live life, live life, have fun. See friends that I haven't seen in a really long time. But yeah, that was a whole lot of fun. I'm already planning for next year. Next year we're staying for at least a month. Not playing these games. Not ever. Not I said the cat. Harry has me saying that. That's so annoying. Oh my god. So yeah, I came back, was excruciatingly jet lagged. And then a week or two after that, I had to go to KCON. And it was my first KCON. It was so much fun. KCON was like incredible. I don't, oh my God. I really didn't know what to expect because to be honest with you, I'm not very good in crowds of people and that's what KCON is. It's a giant crowd of people. Also like I've never really hung out with influencers before so I didn't know what to expect there. I, I, I don't know, I was thinking of like horror stories and you know, it was, I, I didn't know what to expect but um so yeah i was nervous but intrigued and i did you know i had a lot of fun there it was so much fun meeting you guys and i have some things from kcon that i have not uploaded yet but it'll be uploaded by the end of this month i was able to interview a bunch of indie brands actually at kcon so that was a lot of fun so that video will be out probably by the end of this month because i have a whole lot of other things that i want to post before that did not vlog very well at all that entire time actually if you want to know what i did at kcon watch miles j's vlogs he actually did it better than i did yeah every time i'm about to have a meet and greet i always kind of freak out a little bit i'm like no one's gonna come and then part of me is like well kendall you're kind of awkward anyway so maybe if no one comes that'll be a way for you to like sneak out <laughs> I'm like having that inward battle or whatever. Where are all my sponges? Oh, here they are. I got my first actual beauty blender. I don't get what the hype is all about, but. My meet and greet, they kind of gave me the information about the room and everything right before it happened. And they were like, it has a capacity of 90 people. I'm like, 90 people ain't gonna come to that. <laughs> and then what kind of happened is they had some chairs. It wasn't 90 chairs. It was, I don't know. I'm not good at like just estimating the number of things without counting them. I'd say about 30, 40. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna come to that either. And then when I came into the room, the chairs were basically full. There was a few like empty, but it wasn't start time. And by the time we like got started the room, all the seats were filled and everyone was like lining up on the walls and in the back and like people were sitting on the floors. And I was like, people actually came. Wow, incredible. Um, so that was very touching and people were able to come up and ask questions and, and I was just able to like spiel <laughs> you know that's what I end up doing anyway so that was incredible and then I got to take pictures with a lot of you guys and everybody was just so sweet yeah so definitely the highlight was meeting you guys and seeing you guys and seeing your faces and hearing your stories and it was very very heartwarming I ended up also doing a demonstration at the main beauty stage which was a lot of fun and kind of how I did it was like it was a get ready with me live and what kind of happened is I got up on stage and I was doing my makeup and I would call people up they would come up and ask me a question and it was very like oh we're here together doing girl talk or whatever and you can ask me whatever or you can tell me whatever and it was just really really fun by the way, this is my supposed supposedly my shimmer that's my shimmer here. My summer shade for NARS, but I think it still looks a little light. Whatever, summer's almost over. So <laughs> like I said, I was nervous to meet influencers, but everyone was super nice. I ended up forming a band. <laughs> Basically all not all of them, but a lot of the black influencers kind of just like hung out together. No reason other than it just kinda happened. We formed a k-pop unit called the blacks we're the blacks of k-con our first single is oh, problematic how is that spelled the blacks <laughs> yeah with two c's no x oh. x yes. oh B -L -A. lowercase a <laughs> <laughs> capital b l lowercase a <laughs> x x yeah. if you want to know all about the formation of said <laughs> fictitious group um again 
probably watch Miles' vlogs more than more than me. But basically, like me, Miles, Jay, Jasmine, and Courtney, uh, Whitney, and Cheyenne kind of just were hanging out. Wow, I look funny. <laughs> We were kind of just hanging out and we were like, we should be a K-pop unit. So much fun. Honestly, that group of people just like made the entire K-Con experience. Like they were so sweet. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect because you always hear like horror stories about, you know, room full of influencers. You never know like if it's going to be just a room full of egos. And like, don't get me wrong, there was some of that, but it was nowhere near like to the capacity that I was expecting. Like everyone was so nice. Well, okay, not everyone. <laughs> most, ev most people were so nice. Should I even talk about this? Yeah, I started already. I really don't know if I should talk about this because I don't want it to... Let me be super vague. Most of the influencers were super sweet, like so sweet, super nice. And if they, even if they weren't like super nice, they were cordial. They were like, oh, hi, nice to meet you or whatever. There was one person, one person out of that like giant room of people that would like go in and out that was like, low key feel like straight up hates me. And I don't know why, <laughs> because this person like we have, nothing in con oh, I don't this person like it's it's one of the most random people like a person that I don't watch and I wouldn't imagine watches my videos because we have nothing like we don't make anywhere near similar content I can tell the difference between someone being shy they're just like kind of drawn back they're kind of shy so they're not really engaging this one person had active animosity towards me or at least I think it was. And it, like I said, it's one of the most random people. So it was kind of like, what did I do to you? <laughs> We've never even talked online, like never talked about this person, never met this person, but it was just like, what did I do to you? And I also don't really, maybe I shouldn't even talk about this cause I don't know. And they never said anything. It was just like kind of a way. And I felt the vibes. And I'm not a person that tends to think like, oh, this person hates me. Oh, I don't think this person likes me. I'm usually pretty right. Like I've never had extended interactions with this person and it's not really bothering me. It was just, it was more so fascinating, you know, kind of make me curious. Like, what was it? <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, what was the final straw? What was it that was like, nope, this just looks weird. So whatever, this can be a bad makeup day cause those happen. I'll try to like bronze it up to make it make sense. But, <laughs> but anyway, I'm not gonna harp on that because I mean, there's no like tea there. It really isn't because like, I didn't even tell this to other influencers. So they didn't even know that I kind of felt this way. But there was this one person that like, I, I couldn't help but like absentmindedly wonder like, why do you, why are you like this? <laughs> what did I do? But like I said, it was one person in the grand scheme of like, you know, hundreds of influencers I, you know, I ended up meeting but like everyone is like so nice and so sweet everyone's kind of awkward too so i was like oh am i the only person that's going to be a little awkward no generally speaking people that make korean related content tend to be quite awkward <laughs> unless you're a dancer they have some charisma the rest of us normies <laughs> are quite awkward but yeah the concert was fun i didn't end up going to the second day of the concert um, I ended up meeting up with an Anni of mine who lives in LA now, and that was quite fun. I haven't seen her in a while. She recently got married, so I got to meet her husband, and they're so cute. Her Korean is so much better than mine, and it's so frustrating. She's also black. She's essentially me if I were like two or three years older and I was married and I had my life somewhat together. No, her Korean is like so good. So like as soon as we were done talking, I like text my language partner. I'm like, so we're gonna have to talk on the phone because I'm not trying to look stupid out in these streets. Basically, <laughs> I don't speak Korean that often. It was so fun to just talk to her because how often do I get the chance to have like extended conversations in Korean these days? Not very often, even though I have a lot of Korean friends, but we, like I said, we're so close into the habit 
of just speaking Konglish, basically. And even when I tell them, I'm like, don't speak to me in English. Don't speak to me in English. It never sticks. So I just need new people to talk to. That's why I end up getting like trying to get language partners and stuff like that. Like I always like get frustrated and I'm like, I'm never gonna meet another language partner again. All y'all are weirdos. <laughs> and then I always end up like, oh, well, here we are. Now I remember why I needed y'all in the first place. Here we are again. But yeah, speaking of which, I wanna do more videos, especially after I move, uh, doing more videos in Korean where like I can just kind of focus and the house is always quiet. So like I can edit like quicker if that makes sense by the way i haven't even re been remarking about this palette it's nice it's pretty standard anastasia this is my first time using it by the way but yeah anyway i ended up meeting that friend i also met up with lily for those of you that remember lily oh i should have recorded this i'm such a crappy vlogger i met up with lily lily is or hot doll um, Lily is one of the finalists that were in the style Korean contest with me last year. We really hit it off. She's so funny. Like she's so freaking funny. And she lives in LA, so we met up and had dinner. We we kikied and kakad and kakad and <laughs> just like, you know, being a little shady as always, a lover. If you've never seen her channel, I highly recommend starting off with like her get ready with me's. Her get ready with me's are so freaking funny. Her name in my um, cacao talk is <laughs> you Ann because of one of her story times. I'm gonna link that one below if you wanna get to know her. She's again, so funny. But yeah, so I saw saw Lily. My cousin and my aunt also came to KCON. They, came, they, live, they live in California. So they were like, and my cousin's really into K-pop. Um, so she was like, that's so cool that you do this. And I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> Helping the generations. Again, it was so nice meeting you guys because, you know, when you, when you make videos, you're kind of in your own little bubble. I'm literally just talking to myself for a few hours <laughs> of the day. Then you realize you just kind of making videos in some way has inspired or touched somebody in some way. And it's just like, wow, that's cool. I feel like particularly during my live demo, I was able to get to kind of talk to you guys a bit more in like a very, not very serious, there were serious moments in it. Um, I had a viewer come up and we kind of talked about how like feeling beautiful and like what that means she was so sweet i wish i remembered her name i ended up seeing her a few times throughout the day throughout the days and she was just so sweet and basically she was talking she was korean american and she was saying how um she kind of never felt beautiful because she's not these standards of beauty it was just so heart-wrenching to kind of like have that conversation but i felt so hopeful by the end of it I guess I could share this little tidbit here because I don't think I've ever done it on this channel. Situations like that, it can make you feel very unworthy. Kind of one thing I've been telling myself and telling my friends when they go through a hard time and telling people in my comments if they're going through a hard time. Just a simple motto that I don't know where it came from. It was a God idea. So um, you are loved and you are lovable. I feel like other people don't love you. You got to remember that you are loved. Um, and you should be loved by yourself. For me, I feel like that love comes from a high, higher power. I feel like I'm loved by God, so who am I to not love myself, you know? And also in the same kind of conversation, I am lovable. Who am I to say that I'm not lovable, that I am not innately a creature that deserving of love? And when I remind myself that I am loved and I am lovable, then it really changes the way that you think about yourself and what you are willing to do and what you're willing to take and how you're willing to feel about yourself. Like it's hard to feel down on yourself when you feel so loved, right? That's what I tell people. It's like, you are loved and you are lovable. And if someone tries to undermine that, tell them, go kick rocks. You don't see the worth in me, then you're not worthy of being around me. Period, 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 period. Like I've never seen that many K-pop enthusiasts or Korean culture enthusiasts in one room. And I've never been stopped so much. I thought I got stopped a lot in Korea. K-Con is literally the epicenter of all things Korean related. So I should have expected. <laughs> it was so, it was a whirlwind, but it was so much fun. It was so great meeting you guys and people were so 
like enthusiastic. People start crying. Let me tell you something. <laughs> That's always really weird. This one girl, she like collapsed to the floor and just like got in a ball and started tearing up. I'm like, for what? <laughs> so bad because I didn't want to like undermine but I felt like if I was like oh yes simmer down child it is I <laughs> like I would be caught in my butthole but literally she's crying in a ball and I'm looking down at her and I'm like why that's all I said I was like for what what are you why are you <laughs> of all people I don't ever want to get used to that people being so happy to see me the moment that becomes like a thing that you're just like expecting is when you kind of change as a person. Minor update, I think I have a crush on this guy, which is awkward considering, I haven't had a crush on somebody in like two years. So I don't really know how to navigate this space. I feel like he thinks of me as like a puppy though, not like as like an actual girl. It's not the first time, so I'm not that hurt by it. <laughs> I wasn't that invested, but it's just like, oh, sh here we go again. I was talking to somebody, I don't remember who it was, but they said something so true. I offended by guy friends that are like, yeah, I never even thought about it. And at first I didn't get it. And now I started thinking about it. Yeah, why haven't you thought about it? <laughs> like what's wrong with me? What's what's the problem with me? What was it that was like, nah, nah fam, nah. I feel like that's the effect I have. People were like, oh, she's so. Yeah, I definitely wanna go to KCON New York next year. I know people were like, Kendall, I'm so pissed that you went to LA, but you didn't go to New York. That's favoritism. And I was like, well, they actually did not invite me to New York. So <laughs> that's why that happened. But now I guess going forward, it's more of like, oh, well, she went to LA. She might go to New York. I don't know. I'm a cow. I'm a cow. I'm not a cat. I don't say meow. Go moo. I'm not in the mood. I am not looking forward to moving all of this freaking makeup when I move, like, oh God, I just, the thought of that just made me a little nauseous. Oh my God. My neck is so yellow in comparison to, we'll just keep this up here. You don't need to see the rest. Fall's coming soon. They don't need to question it. Or I could just put the foundation on my neck too. Yeah, that's really red in comparison, Jesus. I thought that would make sense. It didn't. I gave him a titty just to keep him calm. I'm just trying to tighten up in the country. Okay. This is gonna be really laughable because I'm so late, um, but Music Rec, I just listened to the Black Panther soundtrack. No one told me, or I guess I should know this, I don't know, I just don't keep up with things, I don't know. Um, no one told me it was basically a Kendrick Lamar album, and I love me some Kendrick Lamar, so I was just, I felt very um, cheated, if that's the right word. It's amazing. Like I had heard like three or four songs off of it. I was like, oh, these are good. But I never like sat there and actually listened to the entire album, but it just was playing on Spotify because Spotify is the plug. People always saying like, Kendall, where do you find these artists from? Because Spotify probably just played them for me randomly. I forgot about this. Huda sent over their new Demi Matte lipsticks. Um, and I keep seeing these in my room and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna wear one of those one day. And I just haven't. This is my first time trying. I think this is my first time. Maybe I've swatched a few of them. I'm sorry, I lose track. I don't know. Little box that opened. Oh, I took this one out of the box. But these are the colors. I'm gonna just pick a random one. I'm gonna try the color she -E -O. No, I'm not. <laughs> No, let's go with Day Slayer. I feel like that's closer to what I'm what I'm looking for here. But yes, I don't know what these are supposed to be. I don't know if these are supposed to be like an actual liquid lipstick or more of like a, or like, are they supposed to dry down? I don't know. Yeah, that's a pretty color. Okay, so that's all for this get ready with me. Sorry if it was kind of all over the place, but if you like this video for whatever reason, don't forget to like this video. Follow me on all my social media. That is Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Thank you everyone. We just reached, I think it was 40K on Instagram. So that's super cool. Um, we're also at 170 here, if I'm not mistaken. Here's the thing. Honesty hour, I actually don't check my subscribers anymore. I feel like it's not really healthy for influencers to be like checking up on it on a regular basis. At least for me, I don't think it is. So I found that out because my mom told me. There's more videos on the screen, check them out. And I'll see you guys next time.